Okay, I'm up on the roof working with this unit. There's two compressors in here. One time clock has no pins, the other time clock has three pins set for 40 minutes. So, uh, anyhow, by looking at the components and everything, I'm going to determine that this is the, the uh, air con this is the uh, cooler, and this side here is the uh, freezer. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to try to put this thing in defrost and see what it does. All right, let's go over this unit one more time. And basically what I did was, these are our heater fuses. I, I put my probes on there. If I read zero, then it's closed. If I put my meter on those fuse, on the when each side of that fuse and I read voltage, it's open. I've checked them, they're good. I could also go from one side to ground if I have power on this side and this side, it's obviously the fuses made. Okay, so I've checked the fuses. The fuses go through here, goes into the contactor. When the contactor is pulled in, that supplies power to our defrost heaters. They're like 10.7. Okay, so they're good. So, and basically I went over here and I look at the tag and I find the running load amps for this compressor which is 9.2 I put my meter uh, my amp meter on one of these uh, legs right here to the compressor I read less than 9 amps now it's important to know that if this thing runs at 9 if this thing runs at 9 amps so it just got satisfied on pressure the cut in and cut out anyhow we'll get back to that so what's important to know here is that if it's rated to run at 9.6 and it's running an amp or two lower and the box temperature is has a little load means it's not a very warm box you're going to have lower amps if you're running high amps then you've got a problem an issue you should never over amp and basically uh, what happened here just now when the compressor kicked out was that I set the cut in and cut out which is right here we have a lead you have a, a, a adjustment here for in and out, cut in and out. It's cutting out at like three pounds, cutting in like at 10 pounds. And, and anything that has a, a temperature for pressure when it comes to gas has a given, you know, any given temperature has a given pressure. So you adjust that thing to cut in and cut out. And so basically it's cutting out at like say minus 16 and cutting in at like minus four, which is perfect. Uh, we have no bubbles in the psych glass when this thing is running. We're amping good. Everything is working. No noises. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that this one is good, and uh, and we're gonna go from there. Uh, so I don't know what to do for it. It seems to be operating perfect. You know, it came on a little bit there and pumped down, but it shouldn't come on and off like that continuously. A little bit, once or twice might be all right, but if it's going to cut in, cut out, cut in, and cut out, that's short cycling. You've got to adjust the cut in and cut out further apart. Uh, in this case, we're good. Let's just say, for instance, you do adjust the cut in and cut out. It's perfect for the temperature, but it still short cycles after it pumps down. It, the valves could be bad leaking off from one side to the other. You just simply put your gauges on it and determine uh, Usually the pressures will start equalizing on both sides and, and that'll tell you right there and then pump down It won't hold uh, it won't hold the uh, pump down and it'll cycle off and on so That's not the issue here Now when you're setting that cut in and cut out you can take that defrost timer right here and you can turn it so that um, it pumps down and see what it's cutting out at, and then you can put it back in, and it'll and the gas and the solenoid will open up, and the gas will rush back in, and you'll see it climb and it'll cut in. This way, you can adjust your cut in and cut out to be exact. Uh, the other thing is, is when you turn that defrost timer, if it's really hard to turn, it's probably bad. Uh, normally what I do is put it in 10 minutes, turn it to, uh, to defrost and let it go in and let it come out itself and that will tell me that that clock is working fine. Um, I set it, when I got here I set it at like say 8 and it's already moved to 10 so it, it's, it is moving, it is working. 
just about went over everything that I could think about. Um, our our dish, our head and our suction is perfect. Um, so we're just gonna leave it alone. And see what happens. The thermometer store has is reading incorrect. It's reading like three degree minus three when it's minus thirteen, and when it's reading minus seventeen, sixteen, it's reading like minus five. So we're gonna replace that. Okay, so basically it's cut in and cut out. Every given uh, temperature has a pressure. So we set the cut in and the cut out. The cut out will cut out roughly around minus 17 and the cut in, it's cutting in around minus three. So it's controlling temperature by pressure on the suction side. And uh, what we're doing is we're watching it climb in temperature so it gets about around minus three and then it should kick in on rise of temperature on rise of pressure any given temperature has a pressure when it comes to gases so that's what we're doing here so it went down to like minus four and kicked back in and now it's dropping temperature again so in a cycle this thing never sees positive temperature best to keep ice reading between 0 and minus 5 so we keep it close to minus 17 so there you have it it never sees positive temperatures in a cycle and then it goes into two defrosts at 6 and at 6 in the morning 6 in the evening for 40 minutes so everything is working properly okay because their thermometer is about 20 degrees off I got a new one right here we're gonna hang it in here so that they can accurately tell the temperature. When I arrive back from getting this part, that one says minus 5, but that thing's up about 15, so it's probably about minus 16 in there right now. So, let's hang this and go from there. Okay, so it's climbing to like minus 16, and then it goes up to like minus four, minus three, and then it kicks back on and goes back down to minus 17. And it is very quiet. 